be interested and got pulled into that vortex. Um, I had been attending potlucks at, uh, held Wednesday nights, I think, uh, at the uh, Community Computer Center. These were for those kind of strange people who thought that uh, there should be computers that people could individually own and use and that someday this would happen and they wanted to talk about what it would be like when it did happen. And it was a good place to trade uh, information and, and learn about whatever you had to learn about. I remember someone there was telling me, well, modems aren't so hard, you know, this is essentially all you have to do. Now, this was someone who had uh, dropped out of MIT. I mean, you hear that word essentially in the mouth of someone from MIT, you know, much more difficult. <laughs> so, uh, but I didn't pay attention and, and uh, by, uh, I went ahead and, and designed a modem, um, the penny whistle, but well, that actually got marketed through the club. Um, and Fred Moore, I, I don't remember him being there for the uh, potlucks, but he, he had his list building, and so he got 30 of us to come to Gordon's Garage in Menlo Park, a look at a, an Altair, and then what? Well, you were there. I think we just merely decided to, to meet again. I, I wasn't on his list, actually. Um, I had wandered into, the, I think, the Pupils Computer Center, and I think that's where I saw a little flyer announcing uh, the first homebrew computer meeting. And I thought, that, that sounds like a cool idea. So um, I called up my friend and said, hey, we need to go. And we went. Um, listen, my, you know, the homebrew computer club, it was a lot of people just looking just like this. It didn't look formal. We didn't have a formal undertaking. I think it was a hotbed for creative thought, the way it was kind of run without a lot of the strict rules of a lot of other meetings. It was certainly the finest social event of my entire life. I just lived for this thing, and I was, I was a young kid. I was a young kid who was too shy to ever raise my hand. I'd done a lot of electronics design. I'd designed tons and tons more computers than anyone, because I could never get the parts to build them and did it for fun. But I sat in the back row, never, never spoke out, never raised a hand. So interesting to listen to people and how they combine their thoughts for humanity and for people getting along and for you know some of the, the goodness of society, along with the goodness of technology, how it's going to do good for us and how it's going to help us do good in other ways in our lives. So it was just hanging on edge, and I've never been attracted to a TV show so much. Um, it was really incredible, very much as the film pointed out. Uh, it was starting out with this idea of the, the hobby computers and the Altair computer, and now we could all own our own computer. And like Lee said, we all knew that we wanted to own our own computer. They were still expensive, ungodly expensive. Um, even the 400 bucks to buy this little kit here was not affordable to very much of us. We'd have to save for quite a long time, but that's a start. It's not quite the computer. You want a computer, you could type in programs and run them. And that's a long step away, and it was a lot more money, and memory cards, and modem cards, and serial cards, and buying teletypes, and it was almost unaffordable. But we still had, you got to start out the seeds of where the world's going to go somewhere. And we were talking about it when all the big companies were dismissing it. It was kind of neat to feel that we were part, you were, while you were there, you were part of a revolution. Everyone talked like, we're, we're on the right track, and they're all missing it. The real professional, high up world, the people who have the money, the people who have the know-how and the experience and the success, they aren't the ones who are predicting what's going to happen, that these computers are now going to be able to reach everyone because they're affordable, thanks to microprocessors. And that was um, pretty much what the club meant to me. Couldn't have really done anything without that. Let's try using a wired mic now. We're getting some distortion on that one. Okay. Uh, is this on? Yeah. 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 Uh, I got my start in electronics. Introduce uh, yourself. Oh, I'm Michael Holly, and uh, I, I didn't join uh, until about the first year of the Homebrew Club. I was uh, interested in, in, in building stuff with electronics, audio kits. Every issue of Popular Electronics would have uh, some kit or Electronics Illustrated, Radio Electronics, buy these magazines and, and, and build a kit. And uh, in 1975, I got my uh, uh, first copy of, uh, or I got my copy of Popular Electronics. The amp. The amp. Uh, the amp is blown. Oh, wait a minute, you're back on that one. Yeah, sure. Try the wire. I want to close it. The yeah, we'll cut in and out. Okay. <laughs> so, so in, in, uh, in January 1975, I got my copy of Popular Electronics with the Altair computer on it. However, I did make it to Cuba. I bought it in Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. Uh, I got there on a Navy destroyer. I wasn't trying it uh, in a canoe. <laughs> yeah. And uh, in September of 75, I started going to the College of San Mateo. 
and uh, down the street from the College of San Mateo was a computer store, and I got a job down there assembling computers. If you wanted a computer, you needed a soldering iron, and so, uh, and, and there was a lot of people who got to were in the homebrew club doing that, building computers, uh, and taking their pay in, in computer parts, and so that was uh, uh, how I got my start. Now, there's one fellow down here, uh, I asked a question about RS-232, and I got an answer. Then I asked a second question, and then he rudely interrupted me and vectored it off, I guess, to somebody else. <laughs> so that, that meeting is there. Were, <laughs> you know, anyway, that, that was Lee. And later I moved to uh, Seattle, and uh, uh, the Northwest Computer Society up there had his brother, Joe, was, was up there.